Welcome back. A local nonprofit that serves Indianapolis's homeless community is looking to the future. Partners in Housing recently celebrated their 30th anniversary. We go unfiltered tonight with Director Jennifer Green about the group's renewed commitment to serve thousands here in central Indiana. Jennifer, thanks so much for joining us. Congratulations on 30 years. How does that feel? Uh, it feels wonderful just to be able to serve the public for that um, amount of time. It's a great achievement. I can imagine. You know what? For those who aren't familiar, explain how Partners in Housing helps the homeless. Well, as you stated before, we're a 30 year nonprofit organization that um, really focuses on that population of those that have been chronically homeless and those that are just also um, dealing with housing instability. And so we have about 12 properties here in um, Indianapolis, one in Kokomo, and that's our focus is to making sure that that population is housed. Um, we work with the city through their continuum of care program that really um, focuses on those that have been chronically homeless. And so that's been our focus for the last 30 years. So Jennifer, what, what are some of your recent accomplishments? Well, I think one of the things that we can say is we have really increased our service, support service staff. Um, as you know, uh, that population and, and making sure that they have the services they need to retain their housing is a, is, takes a lot of work. And so being able to provide them with the case management services and the life skills and all the things they need to be successful, I think is a big accomplishment for us. How would you describe the population now as compared to maybe a couple of years ago or, or even further back? I think we're, we're seeing more people that um, have mental illness mm. um, and we're seeing the population of African-American homelessness increase. Um, and so we're seeing people that have not necessarily been chronically homeless, and we consider chronically homeless, you know, a year to two years ha having uh, been homeless. I mean, the population, that part is changing. And we're seeing more families that need housing that have become homeless. Yeah. 30 years down, looking ahead to 2024, what are some of the goals and, and plans? Well, I think one of the things that we're um, kind of, we're really proud of is that um, starting in January, we're going to start to house those that are um, 18 to 24, that youth population, another population of homelessness that's growing. And so we received funding from the city for those um, residents, and we're going to start that program in January of 2024. The other one is we are working on another um, development that will have 32 units that will focus on larger bedroom sizes that will focus on homeless families and so that's another as I mentioned before another avenue that um, is really increasing and so we're excited about that um, looking for 2024. Jennifer, just kind of a, I, this is, this is a, a, a deep question and we could probably do an entire half an hour on it but if you can talk about the stigma associated with the, the homeless population and also, and you mentioned it a little while ago, what the city and maybe even the state can do to help with this. Yeah, I think that people assume that every homeless person wants to be homeless or that every homeless person, um, you know, has certain, you know, that they just need to pick their self up and, and, and get back on track. But I think what we learned a lot from COVID is that, you know, a lot of people are just one paycheck away from something happening yep. in their life that causes homelessness. Um, we find people that have been, you know, had professional jobs. We've had people that um, had one health incident that required them to lose their housing because of health care costs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have people that you know, went through a divorce. There's, there's a lot of different factors that go into that. Not everyone has substance abuse. Not everyone right. is mentally ill. Um, it, it just is a lot of different situations that can put people into that homeless um, population. So I think 
The biggest piece is for the city and state to really focus on um, finding a way to create affordable housing because affordable housing, that's what it starts with. Sure. That population that has housing that's affordable then doesn't get them to the point of being homeless. Yeah. So having, um, um, you know, making that easier to for developers to create that housing and also making sure that organizations like us have funding for services. HUD does not provide that money. Mm -hmm. um, for services, so it's got to come from municipalities or the state, or even philanthropy, to make sure that those dollars are available for us to keep people housed. Well, fantastic job, 30 years. Congratulations again, Jennifer Green. Thank you so much for joining us for Unfiltered. We look forward to maybe talking with you in 2024 as well. Have a good New Year and a happy holiday. All right, thank you.